Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. Today we're going to get to see the armadillo as well as wolf armor. Now if you're out of the loop let me quickly fill you in. The armadillo was the winner of this year's mob vote which takes place at Minecraft Live. And the news today is that we can get hands on with this new mob as it's a part of Bedrock's preview edition and it'll soon be coming to Java edition snapshots as well. Now this Bedrock preview is for 1.20 as you can see here. But to see the armadillo and the wolf armor, it's in its own category. As you can see, the update 21 is actually separate from this one. Does this mean that the armadillo and wolf armor might actually make its way into a minor edition of Minecraft, like 1.20.5? I can only speculate, but if you're keeping track of the numbers, of course, we recently covered the 1.20.3 update. So I'll take this opportunity to let you know what 1.20.4 was about. I hope you didn't get your hopes up because it was just a critical bug that got missed. Decorated pots could actually delete items inside of them when reloading a world, which is bad, so that got fixed. And that's why after 1.20.3, we had a very quick rollout of 1.20.4. The next important thing to mention is that we are seeing the very first iteration of the armadillo. We are seeing the mob here in its early stages of development. This is far from being a fully finished feature. So with previous winners of the mob vote like the sniffer, we got to see the finished product entered into the game without too much input from the community. Whereas this time around an emphasis has been placed on the development of this mob we're seeing it in its early stages and they're looking for our feedback to help guide its development. Oh and here it is, my very first naturally spawned armadillo. Oh and I've startled it already. And I was going to comment that it kind of looked like two of them together and it was, they were bundled up in the same spot. Now here on Bedrock Preview, I'm not able to cover new features in as much detail as I can on Java, and that's just because I've got more knowledge of how the game works and how to use commands. So this is a great reason to subscribe to the channel because it's gonna be coming to a Java snapshot soon. I'll be covering it here on the channel and we'll get to learn even more about the armadillo. So thanks for doing that, but the first thing we're actually gonna cover in this video is the new armadillo scoot. Now we already have Scoot in the game, so this one's been called Armadillo Scoot. And of course, we can use this new item to craft up some armor for our wolves. And here is the recipe. And that icon, I gotta say, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like much. Like, I wouldn't have thought that was wolf armor at a glance. And I was gonna say, we'll get used to seeing this strange item, but of course, everything is subject to change at the moment. And as for the obtaining of this Armadillo Scoot, we're going to cover that when we get to the Armadillo. To equip it on one of our free doggos that we got right here, you just have to walk up to your doggo and right click it. But you have to be the owner. So if this was another player's dog, I wouldn't be able to equip it with this armor. And let's just take a moment to uh, appreciate it for a second. I'm not entirely sure what I think about that. I kind of think it looks a little odd when it goes over their face at the front here. Also, the little shin pads that they're wearing, not too sure about that, but I like how it goes over the main part of their body. That's looking pretty decent. Now, I know y'all are going to call me a bad owner, but we want to check this out in action. We've got our doggos on an adventure, we get creepered, and oh my god, they're all dead. Okay, this one survived. This one survived. Thank goodness. So, I'd recently watched the video promoting these new features on the Minecraft channel. Their way of showing off how to protect your wolves was by letting a creeper explode near them. And, well, <laughs> they survived in that video, but not in our test. Now, as for the strength of this armor, it's supposed to be the same as diamond horse armor. And according to the Minecraft wiki, that's 11 points of armor. And I'm thinking now that that might not be enough. But anyway, we've seen how to equip this thing with the armor. What if we decide we want to take it off? Well, you have to use shears to get your armor back. And it's important to note that the wolf armor doesn't have any durability. Like the shears down here have the little durability meter, that doesn't seem to apply to wolf armor. Now dispensers can equip armor onto a player, and they can also use shears on occasion too. So you might be wondering if this will work with the doggo, but it's only the owner that can interact with their dog. So dispensers aren't going to interact with them. Oh, and one last observation that we've made, when the dog dies, you get your wolf armor back. 
So next up, we're going to look at the Armadillo, and this savannah is absolutely massive. I've flown around it, and I've only just found my second naturally spawning Armadillo. One of the ways that you can spot these is simply by flying around and waiting to see an animal pop into existence. That's how it works here on Bedrock. You actually get to see that in front of you, and quite often you get multiple in the same spot. Anyway, the point is that this savannah was massive. I've been flying around looking for those mobs popping into existence and only twice did I see the armadillo. This could suggest that this is a really rare mob. And let's first of all talk about how to farm scoot from this thing, or should I say armadillo scoot. You want to get close to it and then you want to use the brush tool. So right click on it and it produces a scoot and it went flying up into the air. <laughs> And apparently, you can just do this over and over again. Minecrafters of the world, I present to you my infinite scoot farm. It works the same way in survival, but here you can see it uses up a lot of the brush's durability. Which, according to the wiki, has 64 uses. So this thing uses more than one durability at a time. So this is all subject to change, but it could be that Mojang's thinking is rather than having a cooldown, you can just get as much as you want but it's going to be costly on your brush tool. I actually think that's a, a pretty cool approach. It's kind of different from the way things have been done before. Oh, buddy, you're so cute. It doesn't feel right leaving you locked up in there. And it should also be noted in the change logs that it says that scoots drop periodically. But with my brief time with this armadillo, I've yet to see them drop one of their own accord. This could again mean that this farm is useful if you just put a hopper down the bottom and keep an armadillo in that space. Next up, we're going to learn about the armadillo's favorite food, which is spider eyes. And as you can see, it acts like a lure so the armadillo can follow you. Let's click on this one. Let's click on that one. Are they going to make an armadillo baby? Oh, look at that guy. So cute and adorable. And we can use the spider eye to grow you up real fast. Oh, that was that was very, very quick. Now, one thing I can't do when I'm around these armadillos is run. Aha, we have startled the armadillo, and it'll take three seconds for it to become unstartled. But if I keep running during this time, that's not going to happen, okay? Because it's constantly scanning for events that startle it. So I've stopped running, three seconds later, bam, there they go again. Now, I've been killing armadillos, and I swear this is for science, so we can learn about them. It takes three types of a wooden sword to kill an armadillo. Now, what about when it's curled up into its shell? If I put a zombie over here, it's going to cause this thing to go into its shell. So I'm going to swipe it and then wait for it to go back again. Swipe it again. It'll change one more time. And then that final swipe still kills it. It seems as if when they're curled up in their shell like this, they don't actually gain any protective kind of status. I think it'd be really cool if they had more armor and they were more resilient to damage when in this state. Now, when it is curled up, you also can't feed it. Look at this. We're no longer able to interact with it. Now, there are things that can stop it from curling up. Like if it decides to flee, then it will run away. We can also leash it and lead it around. It also doesn't curl up if it's falling in air or if it's in water. So you've seen that I can startle this mob by running and we know that zombies too will startle it. So the armadillo is startled by undead mobs. That's the Drowned, the Husk, the Phantom, Skeleton, Skeleton Horse, Stray, Wither, Wither Skeleton, Zoglin, Zombie, Zombie Horse, Zombie Villager, and Zombified Piglin. And the website does mention a wider host of mobs, so let's test out a few. We've got a Blaze here, and it seems to be fine. It's also not bothered by the Creeper. Yep, the Pillager doesn't bother it either. Nor does a Witch, a Slime, or a Shulker, it would seem. Hmm, maybe I just misinterpreted what they were trying to say here. So that was the armadillo, and I'm sure there's more to learn about this, which we'll do when the Java snapshot arrives. If you've got any questions about this or the wolf armor, leave them in the comments down below, and when we get our hands on it in Java, I'll be able to take a deeper dive into these new features. And there is one more thing I want to cover, which is a new command. This might come to Java as well. It sounds like the sort of thing that could. It is the ability to hide elements of the heads-up display. But sadly, every time I run any of these commands, it just makes my hotbar down the bottom here disappear in survival, which is not particularly helpful. But as you can see, there's massive potential for some unique experiences here with the ability to perhaps hide tooltips as well as your health. This could be really interesting for map making. 
But yeah, nothing we can check out in detail at the moment. So it brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe to catch the next one when we get to see these mobs in Java. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.